All right, a good nerve shop everybody. So our good friend X Morning Star X. This is going to be the important video that I hope more people watch. Um, I'll, I'll I'll upload the other two, but really watch this one. This was the most important one. If you're only going to watch one, we're discussing this question. The, the great questions that X Morning Star X brought up about an article that I translated from the Caliber Abishlita about the question of the difference between human beings and animals. So the first issue was that the Rebbe said that the great reason why there's more violence in public schools is because children are being taught in the public schools that they are uh, that, that they're essentially animals and so they should act like animals. Um, and that we shouldn't correct people when they're acting like animals. The other thing is, is there really such a difference between humans and animals? So let's get, let's talk about these things. And I discussed this at work today. We had, um, I, I do, I was doing a, a non-denominational out of cell spirituality group for two of the inmates and one of them was discussing his struggles with anger that have led him on numerous occasions to commit arson um, a mentally ill inmate um, and he was recognizing you know and we were discussing this article that I translated there um And I find all these things fascinating. So essentially, this is what my answer is going to be. And this is what I spoke about in the, in the, in the prison. I also do these, I, I'm also a chaplain in another institution, New York State. And one of the things, in addition to my regular religious services, one of the things that the chaplains are supposed to do is lead, or other staff members, is lead spirituality groups. And with the uh, New York State, Albany gave me a guide to what how to lead a spirituality group and they said there are many different definitions of what spirituality is the lowest common denominator that can include everything is that spirituality is whatever makes your life meaningful and meaning isn't necessarily positive there can be negative spirituality too you know and it's something else we can discuss but that's what makes your life meaningful and that's it now I took that to the next step to say that what it means is what separates us from the human be from the animals. What makes a human being different from an animal? right? like we said in the thing, that the difference between a human being and an animal is iron, that a human being can say no. And also can say kia kol havel, which I guess we could add to that, that, that we can recognize what's nonsense, what's vanity. And so that's the major difference between human beings and animals is that we have self-control and animals do not. And there are other things that I've discussed many times about the difference between human beings and animals that we are able to, uh, that we, we have things that bring meaning to our lives so we understand the differences between human beings and animals. You know, the, the way I say, you know, there's a Dalmatian, look at the first Dalmatian to get the AKC uh, certification the same way that uh, 
you know, that we look at George Washington. And so uh, our connection to George Washington is a spiritual connection. Because we have meaning in our lives from George Washington or from Abraham Lincoln or from uh, Martin Luther King. Whoever it is, you know, these people, uh, you know, not only although Martin Luther King was a pastor, but I'm saying they, you know, give us meaning in our lives. They, and, and animals don't have that. Animals might have their own forms of spirituality and so forth. We're going to discuss that. I didn't really discuss that at work. But the main difference, like we said in the, in the video that we're talking about from yesterday, is that, you know, animals cannot conquer their instincts and human beings can. Human beings make choices and animals really don't. So one of the inmates there spoke about a show that he saw on the Discovery Channel or Animal Planet or something about a, a lioness who adopted a baby gazelle. And she treated the baby gazelle as if it was uh, her own. And, but she also was struggling with maybe also eating the baby gazelle, but also trying to nurse it and care for it and so forth. Now, the fact that this story is being told to us probably has this agenda of what the Rebbe is saying, that people are trying to blur the line between human beings and animals, and have been trying to blur this line for millennia, and basically trying to say that we're not that different. Human beings and animals are the same. But we are different. Um, obviously we have similarities, but we also have differences. Uh, and, the, and the difference, and the main difference is free will and morality. And so to answer your question about the animals being good or evil and this and that, I was, again, like I said in the, in the earlier videos I made today, animals aren't good or evil. I was just translating and I was using the Hebrew idiom of a chayera. So a chayera means a dangerous animal, but the word raw means evil or bad. It doesn't mean the animal is good or bad. Animals not good or bad. Animals are not good or bad. Animals are animals. The only thing that's evil is, is in relationship to us if they harm human beings. So that's evil to the human being. It's it's relative. It's not an absolute. Uh, there's nothing evil about a lion eating a gazelle any more than there's anything evil about a human being eating a hamburger. And there's nothing. evil about uh, you know, any of this, you know, we, we talked about the story that Rush Limbaugh said about the baby who, the child was eaten by an alligator in Florida and uh, you know, people were saying, what was he thinking? And Rush Limbaugh said that uh, why are we anthropomorphizing the alligator? The alligator wasn't thinking anything. The alligator was just following its instinct and eating. So then, but then, what's the? What did we see here, though, with the story of the lion, the lioness with the baby gazelle? She was, she seemed to be struggling with almost a moral dilemma of what to do with this baby gazelle. And I said, no, she's not struggling with any moral dilemma. There was no issue of good or evil here. It was two opposing instincts: the maternal instinct and the and the appetite instinct competing with each other but it wasn't that, that she was philosophizing you know trying to do like uh, Sophie's choice what should she do should she eat this gazelle or should she care for the gazelle no it, this wasn't this wasn't a moral issue it was simply 
who she is. She's, uh, you know, she's a liar. And uh, it's not that she was evolving something new to, to care for this uh, gazelle. It was the maternal instinct is an inborn instinct that she's had all along, and and the it was abnormal that she's using it for another animal, but it's not that abnormal. But it wasn't an issue of morals or ethics. Animals don't have morals. Animals don't have ethics. Animals don't have ethical dilemmas. Animals only have instinct, and sometimes their instincts compete. And so to us as human beings who do have ethics and morals, we do have dilemmas, and we do have these differences. But we believe, we fool ourselves to believe that we are out of control, we don't have self-control. I brought up something in our discussion group that I remember I was at a, a class to teach about, among other things, was you know, for marriage counseling, and what about dealing with, with, with domestic abuse? And they say, you know, most, for the most part, the domestic abusers, the batterers, they're not going to punch someone in the face. They're going to punch someone, hurt someone in a place that's covered by clothing to hide their crimes which demonstrates that they did have self-control and they used their self-control and abused their self-control to abuse someone else willingly in an evil way. Um, if they were just totally out of control, why did they choose to cover up their crime uh, by... By doing it, this you know, it might have been a difficult thing. It might have been a struggle, but in the end, the the abuser could have chosen not to abuse the person at all. And, and this claim that they had they were unable to control themselves is false, because human beings are not animals. Human beings have free will. Human beings can choose between good and evil. And they, and, and when someone does something evil, they make a choice. An animal doesn't make a choice. The alligator that ate the, the child in Disney World didn't choose to eat that animal, didn't make an ethical choice that I'm going to eat this, this baby or I'm going to instead go eat an animal. It's, uh, animals don't have a choice. Animals have instinct. Human beings do have instincts, but we can overcome them. So that's the that, that that's that's the main issue that we have here. And now, as far as this issue that you never heard that uh, evolution the, and the teaching of the theory of evolution leads to evil, I'm surprised by that. I don't know anything about you. I don't know how old you are. I don't know if you're a man or a woman. I don't know. But I remember myself getting in trouble in you know, high school, writing an article in the, in, in the school paper about the evils of the theory of evolution, basing, it was a Jewish school I was in, and I was basing it on things that I heard from evangelical Christians on television, but I agreed with, <clears throat> that essentially, you know, and other articles, it was a story, I think, was the Al Gore was it was a, an article in the creationist magazine where Al Gore was talking about violence in schools and he said it, it can't be helped this is part of our evolutionary makeup this is this is uh, you know it's in our genes to be violent and, and there's really nothing we can do about it and the pastor or the preacher or whoever it was, who was, uh, or the article, the author of the article said that's not true. They said it's because people are being taught that they're animals, that's why they act like animals. If they were taught that there's a difference between a human being and an animal, they wouldn't act like animals as much, or they would be able to control themselves more. Um, so, 
so and I wrote there that you know the Holocaust came from Darwinian ideology you know social Darwinism survival of the fittest now my principal uh, the principal of my school a woman she was very offended by that an Orthodox Jewish woman who said you know she she was offended because she believes in God she believes in the Torah but she believes that God used evolution because uh, she's you know modern Orthodox so she believed that uh, that God used evolution and so she was very offended by my connection between the Holocaust and, and Darwinism but to say that you never heard anything like that I mean this is something that I've heard for a long time whether or not you agree with it then you're free to disagree with it but it's not a chiddush it's not my chiddush it's not the Kalver Rebbe's chiddush this uh, chiddush means a novelty a new idea from Chadash means new it's not it's, it's, there's nothing novel about this idea that, that, the, that the, the ideology of the theory of evolution that we come from animals has led to human beings acting in an animalistic way because we have the capability of acting in an animalistic way but we also have the capability to choose and we can choose in a way to be worse than the animals because you know uh, and again it's not fair for us to make a judgment moral judgment call on animals because animals don't have morality. There's nothing immoral about an animal eating another animal, or even an animal eating a human. And the only evil is vis-a-vis -vis our relationship to the animal, that it, how it affects us. That's all this being said. Because I'm almost to the mikveh, and I, I think I, I've talked long enough. So then the second question, maybe make another video about that, but maybe not. The second question is, what about our relationship to animals? We see, you know, they ask, do I have a pet? I don't have any pets. And, you know, I know uh, Larry Arn, he always says, you know, he, he, he raises dogs and children on the floor pretty much until they're two years old. They're raised in the same way. And yet, at two years old, the, the, the children start talking, and, they, and yet the dogs never started talking. Uh... And there's a lot of depth in that what Dr. Arn is saying there. Um, but more than that is that, uh, all right, yes, I grew up with pets. I never really liked mammals, to be honest. I always liked to have reptiles as pets, more reptiles and amphibians. I, you know, I... I have allergies, I really don't, and, I, and not only that, I don't really feel uh, such an affinity or a bond to, to dogs, I, I can't stand cats, uh, dogs I understand, they're nice, friendly animals, and, and loyal and everything, but, uh, and, and I, I might sometimes have a certain feeling of affection to a dog to a certain extent, but uh, I don't, in my home, we, we don't have pets. Um, but the thing is, is we have to understand is that this is all our imagination, the anthropomorphisms that we make of the, of the animals. It's, it's just, it's our social construct that we anthropomorphize our pets. The pets are just animals. They're just animals. There's nothing... All right, there's a difference between a wild animal and a domestic animal. Uh, that the, the domestic animal has, you know, has dependency on, on human beings because they were bred that way, and so therefore we have responsibilities to them. But, you know, an animal is still an animal. And 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 that's not a knock on the animal, but when, you know when we anthropomorphize the animals, we're 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 not we're not doing anything. You know, we're not we're not being intellectually honest. 
An animal is an animal. Um, an, an animal goes by instinct. And so, all right, so they have instincts that push them to be dependent on humans when they're domesticated. Uh, and so their their dependence on the humans, you know, might appear to be affection and things, but it's not, there's no morality, there's no good or evil, there's no, you know, they just are what they are, and they're useful to us for what they're useful for, and they give us happiness in life, and, and they're useful to us for that reason. As the animals, we we appreciate them, and we're thankful for them, and we're thankful to God for them. But in the end, they're, they're just animals. And this blurring of the lines between humans and animals, where they're talking about animal rights, and we do believe that we should not uh, be cruel to animals, but that's more because we shouldn't be cruel. It's to teach us. It's not that the animal has an inherent right. It's that the animal is our responsibility. It's not the... In, 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 as I understand it, maybe I'm wrong, but in Judaism, the prohibition against cruelty to animals is not about the rights that the animal has, but rather about the responsibility that the human has. And to teach us a lesson of being kind, you know. I mean, we learned that in this week's Parsha, you know, where... Moses was not allowed to hit the river. Aaron had to hit the river because Moses, the river saved his life, you know, uh, so he couldn't hit it. Now the river is, uh, it's not sentient. And the, uh, you know, you want to argue mystically this and that, the sentient, uh, that, that, that animals and animal objects have a certain sentience, but it's not in the same human way that we have sentience. And most people uh, would say they don't have sentience. A, a river doesn't have sentience. Some people might believe that, even within the Jewish tradition. There, there are different viewpoints on that. Um, it, these are complicated issues, but even with that, but the river's sentience has no morality to it. The river doesn't have free will. And neither is the animal. And and so much of what we anthropomorphize animals, that's our social construct. It's not the, anything inherent in the animal. And um, and they and just like a, a, a parrot will parrot will make sounds that sound like it's talking when it's not really communicating the way we do, it's just imitating the sounds it hears. So so too the the uh, the dog and the cat and the ape and the and the and, and the dolphin and whatever will copy will ape will parrot not only our or, or not even our voices but the same way the parrot copies the voice so too these animals are going to copy our you know interactions with them so that it appears that the animal uh, you know, has sentience and has uh, an affinity and this and that. When it, all it is is just it's it's a copycat. It's not really what the animal, in its essence, the way a human being is. You know, like Yoda says, luminescent beings are we not this coarse matter. That's it. I, I'm sorry, I'm a little out of it today. Thank you for watching. God bless. Please like, share, and subscribe. Channels.